Andrew in Florida, pronouncing him, says, uh, we're not animals. Really? We're not? Yeah, we're not. Um, if, if, we're, if you guys are just animals, then why should I take you seriously? What's their definition of What's an animal? animal? Yeah. A uh, lesser being creature not created in God's image. Okay. Well, that's not my definition of animal. It's not science's definition of animal. So why should we take your definition seriously? Your definition dehumanizes us. No, I'm a humanist. I'm no. a secular humanist. I, I, I exalt humans over everything, including your God. But my question was, if your definition of animal isn't a scientific one, why should we take yours seriously? Because there's more to knowledge than just science. I, I'm sorry, Andrew. Did I ask any question at all about knowledge? I said, why should we take your definition seriously? You have a definition of animal that doesn't match a scientific definition. Why should we care what your definition is? Because if we, if we do this, then now I have to worry about every single person on the planet and what their very narrow definition of animal is. And so your definition means that when you say we're, we're not animals, you're not talking about the scientific definition. You're not talking about science at all. You're just saying we're not lower creatures that weren't created in God's image. We are the creatures created in God's image. Now, if you want to make that claim, then the animal world word is irrelevant. You don't have to call in and say, hey, we're not animals. You should just say, I know that we're created in God's image. And then we'd ask you, how can you prove that? Um. Okay. Yeah, it's just um, we well, Christians get criticized for believing in talking animals in the Bible, but atheists believe in talking animals too. I'm... Yes, because my definition of animal includes human beings, because I'm using the scientific one, which is animals are multicellular eukaryotic organisms in the biological kingdom of animalia. That's the first line of the Wikipedia entry. I just read it to you, and that means that humans are there, and so some animals, like human beings, can talk. Um, the animals that the Bible says can talk, or that the animals that the mm -hmm. non-human animals that the Bible attributes talking to, uh, we have no evidence that they can talk. We have, I have I've got 130 snakes in the other room. None of them have ever spoken a word. Um, I, I realize the Bible says serpent, and it may be interpreted differently, um, but I've also been around a lot of donkeys on farms. They've never spoken. Um, so when people are mocking Christians for believing animals can talk, which I don't advocate for, because I fully understand that if, in fact, the Christian God existed, he can make an animal talk. It, seem, it, would, seem, it would be completely unsurprising to me that God could make an animal, a non-human animal, talk. But you called in to say, we're not animals, we're made in the image of God, so why not just say, you're here to demonstrate that we're made in the image of God? Um, okay. So uh, say it. The, you're looking for natural um, <laughs> methods, natural epistemology. I'll, I'll do my balls. Uh, I assume you won't say theological or philosophical um, re arguments, right? Just I, just I want. Uh, I want. Points. I want an argument supported by objectively verifiable evidence. If that takes the form of theological stuff, that's fine too. Okay. Um, if an entire okay, so here's so I guess here's a good argument. Um, if we if we see if we see an entire animal species getting extinct, we would just shrug our shoulders. But if we if we got extinct, you would we would freak out. We would freak out immensely. So we Andrew, attribute Andrew, a higher divinity, Andrew, a higher value to human beings Andrew, over animals. Andrew. Did you just say that if we went extinct, we would freak out? We would, we would, sorry, we would freak out about the thought of going. Sure. Like other species so, extinct, we wouldn't, we would just shrug our shoulders. That's, yeah. So, so I, I did, I don't want to monopolize all this, but I'm, I'm, my, my brain is going a million miles an hour right now. So 
when other species go extinct, some of us don't shrug our shoulders. As a matter of fact, some of us work with conservation efforts to try to avoid them going extinct. However, your argument is in no way a demonstration that we're made in the image of God. Your argument is one where we are selfish. Your argument is if we say something else, if something bad happened to a non-human, we shrug it off. And if we see something bad happen to humans, we don't shrug it off. But that is about our self-interest. It has nothing to do with whether or not we're made in the image of God. So I'm still looking for an argument that we're made in the image of God. Um, okay. Uh, I just tried one. I'm aware you just tried one. Let me let me ask this real quick. Are are you and I animals under the scientific definition of animal? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I could say so. Sure. So under the scientific definition of animal, you and I are, are animals. You have a different context for animal. That is, there are human beings that are made in God's image, and then there are animals that aren't made in God's image. And you tried to present an argument for that, and the argument did not mention God at all and didn't mention image at all. And so an argument that needs to begin with premises, where there are connecting terms that result in the conclusion, therefore, humans were made in the image of God. In order for that to be the case, humans and the image of God must be the premises in your argument. So if you're going to try to construct an argument to say that we were made in the image of God, that's the format it needs to take. And Andrew, in your construction of this argument, uh, our definition of animal, uh, the way we treat different groups of animals, the fact that I feel very differently about stepping on a cockroach versus kicking a dog versus murdering my neighbor has nothing to do with what you're going to feed into those premises. Your premises need to stand on their own with their own independent evidence. Our subjective feelings about how animals are treated has nothing to do with it. Okay. I, I don't want to say just the Bible tells me so, because that, I mean, that doesn't work with you guys. So I why, why do you think that wouldn't work with us? Let me check something from the just, top. Just, just for a moment, why do you think that won't work with us? Because I've, I've seen the show. I'm... Well, no, no. What's, what's the just, core reason why? Not... What's what's the core? What's the core reason why the Bible tells you so is not sufficient for us? Because you guys are rejecting that form of knowledge, um, divine revelation. No. What's what's the core idea behind our rejection of it? Yes, I can you, help you, you out if you don't know. It's not, all the... it's not good evidence. Right? So you can, you can bring forth an anecdote and say that's evidence, sure, but it's not good evidence for an extraordinary claim like we're trying to bring forward. That's the reason. So if you can bring forward a Bible claim and then back it up with evidence, you might be getting somewhere. It's like, do you believe that we're made in God's image just because the Bible says so? What? So you have just you have no that, other you, hang I, on just I'm just trying to be clear. You have no other reason to think we're made in the image of God other than the Bible, right? Right. Okay. Is the Bible wrong about anything? Yeah. How do you know it's not wrong about it, us being made in the image of God? Because we, we we can look at the natural world around us. And through natural theology, we can infer that we are we compared to other species are significantly different. We're the only species that worships anything that has religion, and so we have the stamp of divinity within us. So that confirms something the Bible teaches. So I asked you if you had any reason other than the Bible to think that we're made in the image of God, and you said no. And then when I asked about how you know the Bible's not wrong about that thing. Then you went to natural theology, where you argued that because of our specific intellectual ideas or abilities, 
this affirms what the Bible says. So you're, you're trying to reach to something outside the Bible, which is perfectly acceptable and even laudable, except that there's no presentation no, of an argument that says a being that has the capacity to have a religion or thoughts about a god is therefore confirmation that they were made in the image of a god. Because isn't it possible for human beings to have false religions? False religions. I do not think so. So all religions are true? The way you're using that word true, I will, I will disagree, but I think all religions are doubting. All, so and every, religious, true. every religious belief that includes a god, what if it includes 50 gods? Which of those gods are we made in the image of? <laughs> That, 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 that's not verifiable. I, I cannot answer that. I could just answer that all of those are trying to describe ultimate reality. And so whatever language they put on it is called religion. And so they're all so, validly true. Okay. No, no, valid's a different thing. But so here's 23 religions, and you're saying that all of them are trying to describe reality, but are you saying that they're going to get parts of it wrong? Because they don't agree. They, they think of certain things wrong, certain claims or Bible claims. Yeah. But in terms of trying to describe ultimate reality or God. Can they be, can they be wrong? Can they be wrong about whether or not there's a God? Yeah. Yeah. God okay. might not be a personal being. Okay. They could be wrong about that. So if God's not a personal being and that's possible for God not to, to be not a personal being, then how can you claim that we were made in the image of God when we are personal beings? Because I take that to be a religious idea that is confirmed by what we see in the natural world. I believe that is a valid, true claim. I didn't ask what you believe. I pointed out a contradiction. You think that we're made in the image of God and that the proof of this is that there are people who have formed many, many different religions that disagree on every aspect of religion, but because they're trying to answer the ultimate question, this is confirmation that we were made in the image of God. But one of those positions which you claim can be true is that there is not a personal being that is a God. And so now the question was, if there's not, if it is the case that there's not a personal God, then there's not a being in whose image we could have been make, made, which means now you have to accept that it's possible that we weren't made in the image of a being. So the very thing that you're trying to use to show that we were made in God's image rebuts your own position. If you're, yeah, I would say yes. If, you're, if your definition of God is just a theistic personal being definition of a God, but the definition, uh, that, that's a very limited, narrow definition of God. Um, we're still trying to define or discover what God is. No, if you're claiming we that we were made in God's image, if you were claiming, no, is, Andrew, Andrew, if you're claiming we're made in God's image and there's no personal being that is God, how is that possible? Because we're made in the image of whatever God is, ultimate reality. We're made in... If, no, no. In order for us to be made in the image, it's not, what if the, what if the ultimate reality is that there is no being and that means there's no intent. There is no creation. There is no act of creation. There is no act of volition. There is no being. That means that we're not created. I've, I've reduced your argument to a reductio ad absurdum. I agree. I, I accepted your premise to show that it leads to a possible contradiction. And now when asked to resolve the contradiction, you're just like, well, it still means we're made in the image of whatever there is. Okay. And Andrew, you're, you mentioned earlier that we don't know about the, these aspects of God. We're still seeking to find out what God is. 
and yet you're saying we're made in his image. So that means that we have characteristics and attributes that we can identify that you're claiming can be mapped back to this being that exists because we're made in his image. Can you name me just one of those? One of one, one of what? Those. What do you mean by those? One, one of you said man. You said you said mankind is made in God's image, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Which means that God has certain attributes that He imbued upon man because man was made in His image, right? Yes. Attributes. Okay. Attributes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's one attribute that we possess? That supposedly this God possesses. Oh, this God that's, that's a result of your argument. No, no, no. We're 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 getting to the result of the argument here and showing you that you have not made the logical uh, steps needed to get to that conclusion. So, what's one attribute we possess that this God also possesses, according to your claim? Oh, uh, dominion over the animals, divinity over the earth. Divinity over the earth? I mean, it, I'm, I'm sorry. Why, why do we have dominion over the animals? Why do you, why, why do you think that? Because I know, I know in hierarchy over all of the other species. I, okay. I, I can go by myself unequipped into a, into a jungle and get killed by an animal. That's not me having dominion over it. But our, 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 we, we have dominion over... All of the other species on the earth that, that confirms the what is that accounts. what is that what do you even mean by that that we rule over them that we've been given a hierarchy what's ruling over i can go in the forest and get killed by something we could have locusts eat all of our crops and we die because of that we could have a, a, a bacterial infection that rapidly spreads across mankind and we all die from it that's not dominion that's what do you mean by this you know, it could be true in the natural, but yeah, it hasn't happened. So I'm trying to. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm can, can you know, let's let's move away from this. Yeah. I, so Andrew, have you heard, heard of the bubonic what, plague? Yeah. What What you were asked was, hey, name a characteristics of of God that you think we were made in the image of, and in, and you said that the characteristic of God, of which we were made in the image is dominion over the animals that how is that a characteristic and and, and doesn't even, you know he, he asked repeatedly what that means and then you're like oh but it hasn't happened um what do you mean it hasn't happened there have been countless plagues there have been people killed by animals on a regular basis what, what dominion is it that you think is actually happening? We're the dominant species on Earth. Nothing, no species even compares to us. Okay. We're the rulers of this Earth. I. What do you mean? That's what I mean. What makes you think we're the rulers of this Earth? We have complete control and dominance over all of God's other creations. Would you answer the Not fucking question enough. with what you mean? If if we ask you, what do you mean? And you just say, we do. You haven't answered the question, Andrew. What do you mean when you say we have complete control and dominance over every other thing on the planet? Because that's not fucking true. You have no control over cancer, do you? No. No. Do you have, if you were locked into a box with a fucking lion, do you have control over that lion? No. No. So stop pretending that you've answered a question by asserting the same thing again when what you're asserting is demonstrably false. So name a characteristic of God that you know we possess, that you know God possesses. Give me a characteristic of God that you know God possesses that we possess. Self-consciousness. How do you know that God possesses that? That's what I thought. Name another characteristic yeah. that you know God possesses. 
since that one fails? I've listed, I've listed two. Uh, when I we don't, no, we don't accept them. So no, the, don't mean, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie and pretend that I don't accept them. You said God possesses self consciousness, and I said, how do you know that? And you had no answer. How do you know that God possesses self consciousness? I believe it. I don't know it. I didn't I ask. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask so you. I didn't ask you, and I will never fucking ask you to reassert what you believe. I asked how you know it. Because we have self consciousness. Okay, and Andrew. Now, let's, Andrew, let's. Yeah, go ahead. So you want to complete? No, go ahead and complete your point, Matt. Well, what you said is, you say we're made in the image of God. And when I ask what characteristic God has, you say self-consciousness, and you think the reason that you know God has self-consciousness is because we we have it, which makes your argument entirely circular and therefore fallacious. Eric, your turn. Yeah, let's attack this from a different angle, Andrew. Uh, are humans gullible? Yeah. Okay, therefore your God's gullible. Right? possible oh okay by that logic it's humans, possible humans are liars i don't think so humans are liars therefore your god's a liar humans die therefore your god can die are we crossing any lines here that feel uncomfortable for you yeah okay which but one those are assumptions um Go, we could no, no, really no, no, no. Well, i'm, I'm going by your logic here we're going by your logic if humans possess a quality or a characteristic that's an image, a reflection of the God that created them. So humans are gullible, liars, and they can die. Therefore, your God is a gullible, lying person who can die. Does that not compute with you? It don't sound right, but... I'm just following your logic. Yeah. Okay. So here's here's what's here's what I think is going on in your head right now. You're saying, wait, that doesn't sound right. God's not gullible. God's not a liar. God cannot die. Therefore, there are attributes, characteristics that humans possess that God doesn't necessarily possess. Right? That would that would be the only way you could handle that type of rebuttal. And if you go there, you now have to ask yourself, how do I separate the attributes that humans have that God doesn't from the attributes that humans have and God has? And that leads us right back to the original question. How do you know anything about this God? Because your line of reasoning doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. We can't know for sure. But we, we see. We, we see can know at various levels of confidence. A higher reality. So that's that's, well, that's, I, that's, I, that's not that's what not, I believe. But I, that's I'm not, not telling you to do what I believe. I just all right, hold on. You're, you're jumping to high. You're you're jumping to higher levels of reality. You're going from a very specific claim about a god to an entire realm that some that things can exist in. Let's stay on the god thing. All right. So ask yourself, how can you make any assertions or or or, or uh, 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 evaluate and 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 recognize characteristics in this god? What's your process in doing that? Religion. Religion is the is the most. Um, we just, we, we just talked about, we just talked earlier about how religions can make both true and false claims. So pointing, hand-waving at a religion doesn't get you there. Because a religion can say false wait, things. Wait, wait, wait. We believe science, and science makes false claims, and, and science you doesn't don't know everything, science. and we're growing in our knowledge, and, and, and okay. it's like our religion. We make false claims and true okay. claims, and we're growing in our knowledge. So science and we're religions trying. are two, two completely different processes. I'm asking you, you said religion... All right, I'm asking you, how do you know religion is reliable means to do that? Attacking science does not answer the question of how religion is reliable to do that. Right. So you Andrew, cannot test it like science. But if you can't test it, it is the most then reliable. how do you possibly have a warranted belief? If, if, if you, are you saying you believe things that you can't test? Yeah, we can't test, like, an afterlife. Yes, and that's why I don't believe there's an afterlife. Right. 
but many people do. Um, yes, and like, those people are called like irrational. I, Matt, how do you know you're left-handed? I'm not left-handed. I'm right-handed. Okay, how do you know you're right-handed? Because I know I'm right-handed because right-handed has a specific definition of which limb is dominant and which eye is dominant, and they may not necessarily line up, and you don't have to just be right-handed. You could be somewhat ambidextrous. You could be totally ambidextrous. I know because my natural writing is with my right hand, and that's what determines whether or not it's fair to say that I am right-handed. Can you do you anything remotely close? Can you do anything remotely close to what I just did when I ask you, why do you believe there's an afterlife? Close? Yes, I would say close. When we, when we have religious experiences, we are mind entering into that thought process of ultimate reality. We, we get a little glimpse of it, just like the way you know you're right-handed. We, 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 no, uh, no, sir. We, no, sir. I have, no, sir. You have no evidence and no glimpse into anything that is in afterlife. You cannot demonstrate that at all. It's it's frankly the way you just did, but... it, it's frankly Sorry. disgusting for you to pretend that your evidence for an afterlife is even in the ballpark of my evidence for me being right handed. Those two things are so categorically different in the capacity to demonstrate them that it's like it's almost like you're a cartoon at this point to go from, hey, how do you know you're right handed? And somebody tells you to, well, that's how I know there's an afterlife. That's bizarre. <laughs> what, what evidence do you have of an afterlife? I can provide you evidence of my right-handedness. We're not, I, I, get, I, get, I pretty much gave the best we have the closest thing that we can call evidence through religious experiences such as Muhammad going to the moon or I'm, I'm sorry, going to heaven or the apostle Paul going up to the third heaven uh, with all these experiences. What the fuck are um, you talking about? Jesus. What? No, Andrew, what the fuck what? are you talking about? When, when did apostle Paul go to a third heaven and how do you know that's true? And if you can get anywhere near demonstrating that Paul went to the third heaven with evidence that is comparable to what I can present for my right-handedness, I will convert to Christianity on the spot and shut down this entire fucking show forever. You liar. Andrew, you're conflating religious experience with claims of religious experience. How do you know Paul went to a third heaven? How do you know? How do you know Paul even He's existed? He's a witness to it. He he's a witness to, to what? It. He's a witness to what? What third? What's the third heaven? And how's Paul a witness? And how do you know? I I don't know. I can't describe what what it is. He said he couldn't yeah, talk about you it. can't describe what it is. So stop pretending that the bullshit that you believe that you have zero demonstration of is on the same footing as whether or not I'm right or left-handed. It's not. It's embarrassingly bad. It's like when you called in trying to be all cocksure right off the outset. We're not just animals. We're not merely animals. Oh, but I'm sorry. Under my definition of animal, which is a scientific one, which Eric shares as well, you agree with us that we're animals. So you are dishonest from the first words out of your mouth because we are animals under the definition that we're using and under the definition you accept from science. You have an esoteric personal definition that doesn't match science or mine, it, if you said that I liked vanilla ice cream and I said, I do not like vanilla ice cream and I define vanilla ice cream as the pile of excrement that comes out of a cat's bottom into the cat box. And you said, well, that's not what the rest of us mean by vanilla ice cream. And I'd be like, well, tough. Because in the image of the Lord High Cat, that's what I'm going to call vanilla ice cream. you got to use the same terms and the same understanding as people. So if I called in and said, I don't like vanilla ice cream, 
and you were like, I watched you eat vanilla ice cream yesterday. No, you watched me eat what science and, and people who speak English call vanilla ice cream. But what I'm referring to is that turd in the cat box, and I don't like that. Do you realize how silly this is for you to use esoteric terms and definitions and then call in to deny reality? We are animals. You're an animal, Andrew. You're an animal according to science. You're an animal under every definition that matters. And your personal definitions that make appeals to things are things that you cannot demonstrate. You don't have any evidentiary warrant to think they're true and are a complete waste of everyone's time until such time as you can provide evidence for it. Hey, Andrew. Um, I'll take, are you familiar with I'll the take you to a Buddhist temple with me. And I'll show you. I don't need you to take me anywhere. Do you think I've not been to a fucking Buddhist temple? What, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, Andrew, when you take me to an, a Buddhist temple? If we take I visited to, three if in we February. Take you to one that works for you, your heart's going to get open to the to the divine. And you're going to be stopping so offended by religion. You Andrew, think, you think, you I'm not offended. offended by religion. I'm offended by stupidity and irrationality. I'm offended by the notion that people think that their fantasies are on a par with reality. I'm offended by the notion that you think that the problem with me is I just haven't gone to the right fucking Buddhist temple. And that when I go to the right Buddhist temple with you, my heart's going to open up. Do you know how delusional you sound right now? He's he's saying something even worse than that. He's saying, Matt, Matt, you have to abandon your rationality and your reason and just accept. And you just need the right combination of feelings and emotions to do that. He's basically saying just abandon all your logic. Yeah. What, what are you going to do when you take me to this Buddhist temple? Drug me up and hit me over the head with a shovel until I'm fucking, you know, just absolutely incapable of thinking reasonably? What? What? Demonstrable? Objectively? What? Not what it's not a fucking, it's not a fucking straw man. Don't pretend like you know what a logical fallacy is, Andrew, because you don't. What's going to happen to me when I go to a Buddhist temple with you? What objectively verifiable evidence is going to be presented to me in a Buddhist temple that will change me? No, what's going to happen is you'll have an experience and you're going to get out of your scientific box and you're going to see there's more to reality than just science than no. what we can see. Andrew, and you're gonna, Andrew, and you're gonna Andrew, is it possible for someone to have an experience that is ultimately pointing them in a direction that isn't true? Yes. Yes. I yes. would say yes. And so... Why on earth would any experience I ever had in a Buddhist temple make me abandon reason and abandon a need for evidence? What, what experience could I possibly ever have that would make me throw out the single most reliable epistemology so that I could look as delusional as you do right now? No, you're delusional. I didn't throw out science. I've accepted your science. You're the delusional no, you one who's not accepting another form of knowledge. Yes, I'm accepting a form of knowledge that you can't demonstrate is true and that you say I need to have an experience and set aside my logical scientific mind. Don't pretend like you accept science when 30 seconds before you uttered that, you said I needed to get out of my scientific mind. So, Andrew, let me ask you this. Um, do you know what epistemology is? How we come to our knowledge, that, that process? Yeah, how, how we come to know okay. anything. How we come to know anything. Okay, no, 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 hold on. Focus on my like, question. How do I know, how do I know right. if someone loves me? Andrew, you focus on the question, please. Oh, science. Andrew, Andrew, Jeez. focus on my question here, okay? This is the last thing I'll ask you. Why are you employing one type of epistemology for something you really like and you have emotions attached to, but you're applying a different epistemology to everything else in life? Because if I brought, if I brought 10 people to your front door and I said, hey, 
Each one of these guys wants to give you $10 million. You just have to give them your social security number, your mother's maiden name, a copy of your driver's license, and the deed to your house. Is the process you would use to evaluate that claim the same as the process you're using to evaluate your God and what it offers you? No, they're would different, you go off of feelings different and emotions? ways of verification. There's different ways of verification, but there's also a different process you go through as you look at the claim, evaluate the evidence, determine whether that evidence is good or not, and whether they actually support the claims, whether the arguments are valid and sound. There are two different processes here. The process, and I, I even say this without even asking you, I would say that the process you use to evaluate whether those guys promising $10 million, you're using a much more robust and less problematic, more airtight process to evaluate that than you are when you come to religion. Because when it comes to religion, by your own admission, you're saying it has to be feelings and emotions and experiences. And you can just try multiple temples until you finally hit one that just gives you the right, the right uh, feeling before you accept. I could turn that around and say... I'll just keep on presenting you guys with these claims. They want to give you the money, but they want all this personal information. And you'll just, you're just going to hit one that's just going to feel right. Like the, this process doesn't work in the real world. Why are you applying it to, to religion? And, and the ultimate question about things, shouldn't we be more robust, more disciplined when we come to evaluating those questions, not less? We should be disciplined in the, in the manner that it requires. Um, I think it's a mental false equivalency and, and Max getting emotional, he's getting offended that I'm saying science is not all there is. So he's the oh emotional, not me. All right, so I'm going to mute you. To pretend that after I sat here all this time, that I got emotional and offended, when the reality is that we have hand-walked you through fallacy after fallacy after bad argument, and now I'm frustrated, not because you have some truth, but because you don't seem to care about the truth, don't seem to care about any pathway to truth. And now, rather than presenting any argument or evidence about a God, you're just suggesting that I've gotten offended and emotional. What offends me is that you don't give a shit about a pathway to truth. You admit that Religion isn't going to lead you to truth. Faith isn't a pathway to truth. Your epistemology is admittedly broken, and yet you are sitting here telling us that we need to get rid of the most reliable epistemological foundation that we have and instead rely on your admittedly broken epistemology in order to come to some truth. I am frustrated and offended, not because you have a truth, but because you don't seem to care about any pathway to truth. So once again, stop pretending that you have some high ground here and answer the question at hand, which is, do you have any objectively verifiable evidence for any of your religious beliefs? Do you? I've given, I've tried to give several, so I, I can't give any. Goodbye, more. goodbye, and this this is your 33rd and final call. Don't call me again. Because are, do you think you're going to be able at any point in the future to call in and present that evidence? I've tried, so. This You've is, tried. This is You've tried. You've tried and you failed, and you think that the failure is on my end, right? No, not entirely. No, no, no. You think the failure is on my end. You think that I have a flawed epistemology that doesn't accept your believe what the Bible says epistemology. But you don't even believe what the Bible says. You know, that's just a matter of convenience. You throw out whatever you, you don't like. Do you think that there's any likelihood that even if I came to Florida and let you take me to a Buddhist temple and I had a wonderful experience, do you think that's going to change what I understand to be broken epistemology versus real epistemology, reliable epistemology? I, I believe it's possible, but I don't think you have to break your epistemology. That's not, that's not really my point. Okay. Andrew, if I don't have to abandon my epistemology, then why can't you present a case for your what you believe is true 
that matches my epistemology. I just can't match your logic and science. How likely is it that you're just wrong, Andrew? It's possible. And so what I asked. Can you, can you put a percentage value on it, Andrew? Just, yeah. just, just. How likely is it you'll ever actually what? answer the question you're asked the first time? It's zero to hundred percent. How likely is it that you're wrong? Just ballpark. I don't know, but it, it's got to be more than thirty, or else I wouldn't be calling multiple times. Okay. So you, you, that would indicate you have a desire to find the truth, right? Of course. Okay. Do you think that the process by which you reach those truths or those uh, confidence in those truth claims, do you think the process is important that it be robust and accurate? Yes, I've accepted your scientific okay. epistemology. So I, I do believe so we're it's talk, important. We're talking, okay, great, good. All right, good. You accept the scientific epistemology process. You accept that there are epistemologies at play here, right? So why are you abandoning the robust, accurate ones that we use for literally everything else in life? Even, even the technology right now where we are talking to each other at literally the speed of light over copper wires that science gave us, a process that we know works. Why are you abandoning all of that when it comes to the biggest questions of where we come from, what our purpose is, and whether there's a God or not? <laughs> I don't think I'm abandoning it. I'm using it to verify religion. Or you're, some you're, of their you're, but, you're invoking, you're invoking um, feelings and emotions at a Buddhist temple as evidence. Can you imagine a scientist doing that? Hey, if you come in my lab, you'll just get a feeling that it works. Let's publish a paper together. Can you imagine a scientist doing that? They laugh you out of the room. So why are you employing a different process than the process you use for literally everything else in life? Because I, I, I believe it's a different form of knowing a different reality. I believe it's a different process because it's a different type of... You're claiming your um, beliefs. Just knowledge of reality. Like, it's... Okay. I, okay. I, I, gotta, so, I, I don't have any more so, time for this call. You, you don't have any more time for this call. Well, that's unfortunate because I was getting ready to ask the question that was going to blow your mind, but okay. See you later. Bye. Thanks for call, Andrew. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, executive producer of The Line, and I only became a woodworker for the puns. That's not important. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so on our Patreon or as a channel member, and you can actually support specific shows and specific hosts in special tiers on those. Check those options out. Also, you can leave a super thanks and get a little highlighted deal, but if all else fails, you can always like, you can subscribe, and leave a comment. Now, here are some suggestions because I don't care about the algorithm. I am the algorithm. Bye.